I think the cylinder, we simply know the formula for the volume. Uh, just a minute. And for the cylinder, it's V equal pi r squared into A. So here for height, they have used uh, A. And uh, since both the radius and the height, both are changing. Right. Here they have uh, done the partial derivation using the radius. You have to keep in mind if the diameter increases by one inches at the same rate, the radius also increase because they, those two are linear parameters. So the rate of change would be same. So uh, in the term linear parameter, which I mean means th those both are proportional things. If the radius increases by one, the diameter increases by the same rate, not the same, same amount, right? If the radius increases by one, the diameter obviously will increase by two, but the rate of increasing is same. If you find the rate of increasing by divided by dividing the change by the initial initial amount, that would be equal, right? So that that is why they have done with the radius. So that there won't be any effect in the final answer for that. For the first, for the partial derivation, they have obtained the partial derivation and then they have obtained the partial derivation with the height, right? So this is the thing. And after that, they have written the change in volume formula for the volume, right? Just a minute. Right, for the change in for volume. So typically when we are doing our A-level papers, we would be do we would be doing some questions like this to find the maximum volumes or the minimum uh, distance, something like that. At that time, we usually write dy by dx, right? So in the case of our question, there are two variables. One is the diameter and another one is the height. So when there are two variables, if it is possible to change everything into one variable. So we can use uh, this dy by dx setup. So here we cannot use dy by dx because there are two variables. So we are using the partial derivations, right? And the change in volume delta v here, the change in volume delta v is the, there will be a change in volume because of the change of radius and there will be a change in volume because of the radius of, sorry, because of the change in uh, the height. So both those parameters are added. So, so the first is this one. So this is due to the um, change in the radius and the second portion, this is due to the change in the height. So after that, they are simply substituting the values from the previous found parameters and they are substituting the numerical values and finding out the final answer, which is a very simple calculation in this paper. So the first part is done, right? So when you are doing handling these type of questions, first you have to see what type of question is that. So either what are the variables uh, involved in that? What is the formula necessary? And even someone can do this using the diameter thing. So the, the only change is it becomes pi d squared a by four, that's all. So when you are substituting for diameter, you have to substitute by five. Here they have substituted as five by two because it is radius. There you have to substitute by, substitute as five, that's all, right? I think, uh, I have said all the things which is necessary here. Uh, uh, any, if anyone has any doubts, they can speak up or drop a message in the chat. Right, so there are no messages. So I'm going to the next question, right? 
so this is a simple taylor molecular question so they are asking to find the taylor polynomial right so approximate uh, the certain amount using taylor polynomial method so once you see this it's obviously you can find out there are two numbers which are squared and they are taking square root of it so very easy part so in the, if you take move on to the scheme so you can see the formula here is so they have not given the formula yeah it's here it's mentioned so the formula is so we have to write down the formula so which is f equal so the function f equal root of x squared plus y squared so the taylor polynomial we know taylor polynomial f x comma y is equal to f of a comma b plus the first derivative so that is da by f over da by x into x minus a similarly plus da by f over da by y into da by f over da by y into y minus b so my writing would be somewhat unclear because i am writing in the, the mouse eh? so just ignore that Uh, so I have got a message for those those who receive this year. Uh, we want to get ready according to the new syllabus or old syllabus. So as per the information we got, uh, so I got, so we called to the university and they said uh, the old students paper will receive old syllabus paper only for this time. So if you miss this chance, the next time you have to register for the new syllabus and uh, do it in the new syllabus, which is much harder. The paper is much harder, you would have seen. So that is the thing. So better to use this opportunity and get through the subject, right? Right, so as per the Taylor polynomial equation, right? We know we need to find da by f over da by x. So the partial derivative with respect to x. So I expect from you all that you, you all know what is partial derivation. So partial derivation is a simple thing. So when you are derivate, doing the derivation respect to one variable. So here in this case, the variable is x, right? So, so the variable x is the only changing thing. So y should be considered as any other number. So y is a number in that case, right? So simply using that, they have differentiated the function, partially differentiated the function f with x, and similarly, they have partially derivated the function uh, f with respect to y. So when you see the question, you obviously you can find out the numbers they have given are 3.012 and 3.997. So one number is very much closer to three, another number is very much closer to four. So we take a as three and b as four. So so f of three comma four. So that is the first term. So f of a comma b that is obviously five, and the DABA values are find numerically here. So these are very simple steps. You have to just substitute in the equation, and you have to just find out these values. And the next thing is you have to substitute in the Taylor polynomial approximation equation. So here for X and Y, you have to substitute the actual value which has been asked in the question. So that is 3.012 and 3.997. So after substituting this, and if you solve this, you will get the answer as 5.0048. Use a calculator and just, if you want, you can check it now. Um, you will get this answer exactly. Right. Uh, if you have any questions, you can rise up and there is another question. Uh, do it have a big difference with new syllabus and old syllabus? Obviously, there's a very big difference. If you see the paper, the model paper, you can uh, see what is the difference. Right. 
I will try to share the model paper. If you have any doubts, you can ask up to now. I'll just, for the, your information, I'll uh, just share the paper so you can see what is the change in old syllabus and new syllabus. So I'll just run through it. So this is the first question, completely different rather than our paper. So this would be your second one, right? Second and third and the fourth. So you can find it uh, from the Elan, right? So any questions uh, up to now? Did you check the answer? Are you getting the same answer? Yeah, I get the same answer. I checked it. So I get the same answer. Okay, then I'll uh, move on to the next one. Any questions? I got uh, anything? I, nothing. So I, so I have, Wait, I'll try to send the paper to everyone. I have sent the paper. Uh, you can find it in the chat, the new paper. Just run through it and you will see how how much different is there for between the old syllabus and new syllabus one. Right. The third one is a very interesting question, right? Uh, C part. Uh, consider the vector. They have given us a vector, three-dimensional vector. Uh, show that the force F represent a conservative field. So, um, so proving that what is a conservative, so proving that that it represents a conservative field is a simple thing. Just it is an um, uh, scale. Um, sorry, vector multiplication idea. So just you have to remember the format. So they have written it in in a uh, matrix format. So the variables in the x direction are the y, x, i, j, and k. And for each i, j, and k, you have to find out the respective partial derivative of those directions. So da by x by da by y, and uh, sorry, da by da by x, da by da by y, and da by da by z. So, so x is for i, and y is for j, and z is for k. This is the standard thing which we are using uh, for the long time uh, from the A levels. Right. So after that, I think that you all know how to expand uh, uh, determinant. So they have taken the x com i component here. This is the i component, and they have taken the j component and the z component. Right. Uh -huh. I j k. Right. All three components are here, and they have just taken the mod of it. So i times. So first we have to keep the i and multiply daba by daba y, this one daba by daba y into minus 2x cube into z. So you have to take the partial derivation of minus 2x cube z with respect to y. So by looking at this, you can say y is the only variable. So y is not here. So other two variables are considered as constant. So when you take the partial derivation, it is z. So minus, then by the other two direction, that is daba by daba z into 2x squared. So this is also obviously 2x squared is constant when you are seeing from uh, the partial derivation of z. So that is also zero. So in the same, similar manner, they have calculated everything. So when you are keeping the j for the second term, we use minus j times daba by daba x into minus 2x cube into c. So if you multiply, so take the derivative, there will be minus, minus 6x squared into z. So they have written that in the second, four, second place, right? 
again so i'll i'll just write it so first we have to write minus 6 x squared into z so minus after that you have to take daba by daba z times 4xy minus 3x squared z squared so when you take this derivation you will get again you will get minus 6 x is it minus 6 x squared into uh, z so we are multiplying by z sorry derivating by z so the answer would be minus 6 x squared into z so the minus into minus this term becomes positive that's why in the scheme this they have taken the into front that is the only different right so after calculating you can see the vector multiplication gives us zero so as per the theory if the modulus is zero the field is said to be conservative right that is the mathematical part so so what is the fundamental idea behind saying that the field is conservative so anyone has any ideas what is the theory behind not the mathematics theory i mean the physics or the you can connect it with physics anyone someone spoke i just heard a voice and then nothing so if you want to speak just unmute it because i have mute everyone mute all okay then uh, equilibrium of forces equilibrium of forces uh uh, what do you mean by equilibrium of forces in that? Some of the forces uh, that uh, things or any object is uh, uh, no. equal to zero. Uh, no, no, not that one. Not that one. Who is, who is Sachini? The politics will be heard later, so I'm muting that one. Uh, oh, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, the, the thing is, here, if you want to keep it uh, simple, I think everyone uh, remember gravitational field, electric field, and magnetic field, these type of fields. So we are speaking about fields, right? So in fields, when you're trying to move from one point to another point, you have to do some work. Either you have to apply your work and move from one point to another, or you have to absorb the work from the field to move from one person to sorry, one point to another point. So there should be something. Either we have to take the work or we have to give the work. Either one. In conservative fields, you no need to know, do anything. You can move free, freely. There need, we no need to do any work to move from one, fee, one point to another point. Right? Uh, that is the simple idea. Uh, uh, for the civil people, I can give an example in fluids, right? Uh, so for others, uh, I'll just think of one while I swing this in field. Uh, in, in civil, uh, in the fluid section, we used to study about streamlines and EQ potential lines. I think the fluid, if there are any fluid people, they might understand. Uh, EQ potential line means the line where the energy is equal. So if the energy is equal, we no need to do any work to move from one point to another point. We can simply move from a place to another place with equal energy, right? Uh, that is the concept. Uh, in uh, if, uh, if there are any mechanical or electrical electronic people, for them, uh, in their fields, electric field, uh, there are EQ potential uh, 
places. Uh, if I am right, the names are again equipotential lines. Uh, I can't remember the exact name. So again, in those equipotential lines, we no need to do any work to move from one place to another place. So that is the concept behind conservative fields, right? I think, oh, I hope you would have got the idea behind that, right? Uh, so the next question uh, in that is, so we have proved that the field is conservative. And the next part, right, the next part is asking us to find the scalar potential phi such that F equal uh, the operator delta is upside down into phi, right? So the expansion for this is this one, right? You have to remember this one. So basically, there are a few things which we have to keep in mind right so this is the portion which you have to keep it in mind right so daba phi by daba x into i plus daba phi by daba y into j plus daba phi by daba z into k so we know this is the vector which is given to us so these three terms are necessary to proceed to the next thing right so if you have a scalar potential of phi, if we take the first derivatives with the respective direction, we can find the vector, right? So this is the theory. So we have got the answer. So we are equating i for i, j for j, and k for k, right? Simple as that. So you have to start from one, right? Any one of these. So not always it is a rule to start from x. You can start from y you can start from Z, from anything, right? So I'll start from uh, X, right? So if you start from X, you know DABA phi by DABA X. Then if you different, if you integrate this once, only once, you can find phi. So we are in integrating with respect to X. So if you integrate this 4XY with respect to X, you will get 2X squared into Y. Right? And if you integrate the other one with respect to x, we will get x cube into z squared, right? Plus here they have added a constant f of y comma z. So we know, I already said, when we are differentiating with respect to partially differentiating with respect to x, every other terms are considered as numbers, that is every other variables. So here, the other two variables are y and z. So both the variables are considered as constant. So always when we do integration, we usually add the constant c. But here, within the constant c, there can be a y, there can be a z. So we don't know that. We exactly don't know whether there is a y or whether there is a he said, that's why we are including a function, which is uh, f of x comma y. So after that, we have to do some other operations and find what is this f of y comma he said. So for that thing, right? So for that portion, so I'm going to differentiate this one with respect to y. Right. If you differentiate this with respect to y, so here we know phi is equal to 2x squared y minus x cube into z plus f of y comma z. Right. So if you differentiate, we will get 2x squared. Here, this y will be get differentiated and other things will rem remain. It's 2x squared plus x cube into z squared. So x cube into z squared, if that is differentiated with respect to y, so entire term is zero because those are considered constants. And plus here, the f of f x y comma z, that has y within it. We don't know what other terms. It may be y squared, it may be y cube, it may be y to the power of 10, y to the power of 100, whatever it is, we don't know. Sometimes it might be zero also. 
So since we don't know the value, we are just writing it as f dash y comma z. See, we, we already know what is daba phi by daba y from the theory. So that is equal to 2x squared. So these two daba phi by daba y and daba phi by daba y both should be equal because the same scalar potential and the same vector field. So both the things should be same. So by equating these two, we can find uh, we can find what is uh, daba dash y z. Daba dash y z is zero, right? Daba dash y z is zero for us. So if you integrate this by once, so here you have to remember carefully this daba sorry, f dash y comma z, f dash y comma z is the derivative of f y z with respect to y. So we have differentiated this one with respect to y, right? So this is a differenti differentiation with respect to y, right? So that gives answer as zero. So that means when we are differentiating with respect to y, there is a term, this uh, function which involves only y comma z. So here there is no x, right? Don't get confused, right? Here only there is y and z. In y and z, when we are differentiating with respect to y, you are getting only the answer as zero. So that means in the point of view from y, the function has only the terms of z and numbers, right? We know when we differentiate any term, any constant, we get zero. So in the point of view from y, there should be only constants. If there should be only constants, we have only two variables, that is y and z in this case. So there can be only numbers or there can be terms of z. So that is why they have taken here that f of y comma z, so th this is not f dash, there's a mistake here. f of y comma z, that is that should be equal to f z. So now if you go in the other way around, so we have a function of y comma z that is equal to function of z. There is only function, that's a function which involves only z. So if you differentiate this function, which has only z with respect to y, so you will go get an answer of zero, right? So now we have taken it in the uh, other way around. I think everyone uh, would have got it. Any doubts, please ask if, if you didn't get this one, I'll explain this either in single or Tamil. Uh, we will go beyond this after uh, putting this uh, into the mind clearly. If anyone has a doubt, uh, please uh, speak up. I don't mind, I can um, say in single or any. Right. Uh, seems like no one. Right. So then I'll move on to the next one. So now from this one, so we have reduced the function of y and z only to as a function of uh, z. So we can change the phi as our initial function of phi, the scalar potential as 2x squared y minus x cubed z squared into f z. So this is the new phi, right? So already, already we have used some of the data is given to us. So we have used this one, we have used this one. So only remaining one is this. So that is the partial deriv derivation of uh, phi with respect to z. So that is minus two x cube into 
z right so if you if we derive uh, der, uh, derive uh, take the derivation with respect to z for the phi so this is our phi right so you'll take the partial derivative so the partial derivative derivation is minus 2x square x cube into z right so that is from the second term the first term is obviously zero because there are no any uh, z's involved in that from the second term it is minus 2x cube into c plus f dash into z so already we know that this is the term which we got from the data so in the data we know that da bar phi by da bar z is equal to minus 2 x cube into z so by equating these two we can find out that da bar sorry f dash z is equal to 0 so first derivative of z is equal to 0 so that means in the function of f he said right in the function of f he said there are any no any terms which involves is it there is any term which involves is it obviously we will get a number other than zero we will get a number or any other terms involving is it so here we have got only zero so this should be a constant any arbitrary constant c so using this one you can substitute it for phi n we can finally find out the scalar potential phi right so that is the final answer very easy question uh any down this anyone my right, nothing so we'll move on to the third part right so in the third part they have asked us to find the work done right find the work done in a moving um, right find the work done in a moving particle okay right? of unit mass under this field of force from point 000 to point 111 so they have given us two points and we have to find the work done here right so here so that is a simple integrating uh, part so this is the general formula you need to remember that is integration of f into dr so here we have to take the vector the force and multiply by it the directional vector the directional vector is very simple that is dx into i similarly plus dy sorry dy into j plus d is said into k right so here the all <laughs> here you might think there are six three terms in the vector and there are another three terms in the directional uh, vector r so there when we multiply there might be more than nine terms so it get made difficult and so and so but actually it is not it's a very easy multiplication so when we when it comes to dot product you know when you take two vectors a and b the dot product is a uh, mod of a into mod of b into cos theta right so here all three i j k all three are perpendicular to each other so the angle which can be involved are either 90 degree or 0 degree so if the angle is 90 due to cos 90 the dot product is 0 if the angle is 0 it is directly i into i or j into j we know mod of i and mod of j and mod of k all three are unique vectors so, so mod is 1 so if i into i you will get mod i into mod i so which is 1 into 1 it's obviously 1 in the case of 0 if it is 90 no any other consideration it's obviously 0 so if i into j you know that is 0 because both are perpendicular to each other similarly j into k is 0 perpendicular to each other and k into i is 0 because vectors are perpendicular to each other so we have to only consider the vectors which are in line together that is i and i j and j k and k so multiply i 
by i the terms which is before i with the terms of dx and with terms j that is 2x squared into dy then the other part minus 2x cube into z that is into dz no okay then we have multiplied it in the first line right so that is this one so after that here uh, you can do this in three separate uh, ways right uh, you have to do separate this one right that is we are starting from 0 0 0 and we are moving to a point called 1 1 and 1 first of all you can either move in x direction after moving in x direction then you can move in y direction after moving in y direction x y and at last you can move in z direction right we can do it in that manner right so while we are moving in x direction right the initial coordinate is this one 0, 0,0,0 so while we are moving in x direction we are changing the coordinate of x only so the x changes from 0 to 1 while y is 0 and he said this 0 right very very simple concept we are changing only x and keeping other things constant so y is 0 x is 0 so in this entire equation we are going to substitute y equal 0 x equal 0 is it equal 0 and we are going keep going to keep the x terms only right so if you substitute this you will get a term right so which is uh, the so here the dx portion we have to keep the dx portion because the x changes the dy is 0 and the d is at this 0 because uh, y and z are not changing so we can simply neglect this one and we can simply neglect this one right uh, and when it comes to uh, these two uh, that is uh, 4xy and minus -3x squared into z squared we know y is 0 and is at this zero so entire integration is zero so zero we can't integrate zero so for the x direction we need no need to do any work now from changing to y direction we know now we have started from x equal 0 and we have moved to x equal 1 so now the value of x is 1 right what is the value of y y is still zero and is at this still zero so we are going to change y so the y is going to change from 0 to 1 and is it still remains 0 right so at this time you have to you have to substitute 1 uh, for x you have to keep the y terms and for is it we have to substitute 0 and we know dx is 0 again because x does not change and dy does changes so we have to keep the terms dy and at last the z terms dx is also zero sorry d z is also zero so we have to make it zero so again we'll change color again this portion is zero because d z is zero and these are zero right so we only need this one so at this time you have to substitute one for x so that is 2 into dy so the range is 0 to 1 so now the value is x equal 1 y equal 1 now the z changes from 0 to 1 so here dx is 0 and dy is 0 right here dx is 0 this one is 0 and dx is 0 dy is 0 so we need to only consider dz here for x you need to substitute One, so it is two is it into d is it? So two is it into d is it? If you integrate, it is uh, z squared into the range is zero to one. X is changing from zero to one. So you have to break this into three parts. Do the integration separately. Add these three to all these three, and you can 
find what is the work done right if i i don't think so whether the answer is uh, right <laughs> so what would be the answer anyone who worked out this one with me because i don't remember the answer exactly and if you have any doubts please ask डाउट्स में कुछ नहीं था यार कुन डाउट्स है तो मिल गया right anyone so i have I have a question uh uh are we want to check each values or can we integrate the whole equation so if you are comfortable with integrating everything at once you can do it once so you have to write it in this manner right i'll just show it right i'll just show it quickly uh, the right uh, Right. So, if the exchanges, right? When the exchanges, we need to take integration. So, the dx part we have to consider only the dx parts. So, the other two two things are obviously zero because y n uh, uh, y n is it does not change, right? So, when we substitute uh, the values, because when exchanges we know y n z z are zero. So, the initial part is only zero, zero into dx right plus for the next one when y changes 0 to 1 again dx portions are zero we know that one and d z is zero we need to only consider this one so already we have moved from 0 to 1 that is in the x direction we have moved from 0 to 1 so the value of x is now it's 1 so when we substitute one here so 2x squared becomes 2 into dy So plus the last thing again, he said changes from zero to one. So here we no need to consider this part, and we no need to consider this part. And again, we can omit this part because this doesn't change. Only this one changes here. Again, the value of x is uh, um, one. So here the function is minus two. He said. So here the function is minus two. He said. right uh, into d z right so if you integrate here this is actually zero if you integrate this one the answer is 2y so if you substitute uh, the upper limit and lower limit so you will get the answer as 2 here if you integrate the answer is minus z squared right uh, so if you substitute the values the upper limit and lower limit we will get the answer as Minus one. So while adding these two, you will get an answer as one unit, right? Second step didn't clear. Uh, second step means uh, which one you are saying as second step? Uh, second step so 
nothing no any response okay. so then i'll move on to the next question which i did all right so the next one i did was the second question which is uh, related to analytic functions right so in our paper there was a strange change so they introduced the polar thing right uh, there's a small change uh, which when it comes to the polar format uh, the final equation usually we used to keep in mind as daba squared u over daba x squared plus daba v squared over daba y squared is equal to 0 if it is equal to 0 we will say it as uh, analytic but um, that is the concept we usually keep in mind but here they changed it uh, into the polar format so this the first question is absolutely the theory so i hope uh, you know the theory you would have started preparation uh, so these are the uh, formulas for that right and prove it to prove it as an harmonic function we need to keep in mind this part so for, if it is in linear format that is in xy format it is straightforward we, we need to just add up the second derivatives here it is a bit different and uh, simply we need to find the second derivative uh, that is the daba squared v over daba r squared and daba v by r we need an additional term and we need to just substitute in this equation and if it is zero it is a harmonic function right that's all there's not a big deal in this one right uh, to be frank i in my paper i forgot this to do right so the only key thing is you need to remember this equation so uh, I couldn't uh, bring it up at that time, right? So that's a deal here, right? So here, most of the people sometimes get confused while doing the next part, that is the C part. So determine the analytic function whose imaginary part is given. So V is given for us, right? So V is given for us and uh, they are asking to find the u part right so we we know that v is r squared cos 2 theta minus r cos theta right so since v is given right so we can find out if v is given we can find out uh, these things right daba v by daba r right and daba v by daba theta these things can be found directly Right. And from the analytic equation conditions, so these are the conditions, right? We know daba v by daba theta. So here that is this one, daba v by daba theta. After finding this, and if you divide this by r, divide this by r, we can find daba u by daba. That is the thing they have performed here, right? So after finding daba u by daba r so daba u by daba r would be equal to minus 2r sine 2 theta plus sine 2 theta sorry sine theta right so this is daba u by daba r so now we have to integrate this with respect to r so that is minus r squared sine 2 theta plus r sin theta plus a function of theta because when we are considering r with respect to r theta is a constant so uh, here we need to add this term so now you know what is u so after finding u you can find we can find out da by u by da by theta so da by u by daba theta you have to differentiate this one with respect to theta so once you know daba u by daba theta right once we know daba u by daba theta from this condition again so we know daba u by daba theta right if you if we divide it by 1 over r 
and multiply it by a minus value, we should get what is daba V by daba R. From the theory, we know what is daba V by daba R. After equating these two terms, we can find what is H dash theta, right? That is done here, I will show you. Right, so I just erase this. So someone raised a hand. Uh, are there any doubts? Please uh, unmute yourself and ask. Doubts Hi. So that is the thing. Hello. Ah, so, uh, the method is Oh, the So, here you can see they have equated this one. Right? And they have find the f dash theta. So, if the f dash theta is 0, the f theta is see i already spoke about these things right so they have find you right so this is a simple one please choose this one right uh, and just uh, keep in mind to see the polar format right uh, if you uh, remember both polar format and the regular one which involves the x comma y uh, if it comes in x comma y, thank God it's an easy part. If it comes in polar format, it's not a big issue. If you remember the analytic conditions and the uh, equation to prove it as the harmonic function, right? You just need to keep those things in mind, right? And the D part, right? In the D part, uh, they were asked us to express f z in terms of z. Right, we know what is F is F is is U plus I V. For so for U plus I V, they have substituted the U which we have found here, and the V which is given to us in the data. This is given to us in data. They have just substituted. After substituting, they have taken the two theta terms as a common term. Right, the two theta terms. Either you can consider that in that manner or you can consider it with R squared. So they have taken the R squared two together and the R together. So after taking R squared together, you can see it becomes I sine two theta plus I cos two theta, right? So here, generally we need to remember, right? Uh, so what is I? So we simply know I squared is equal to minus one. So this is the key which they have used here. So we know if we want to involve uh, e to the power I, I theta, so e to the power I theta gives us cos theta plus I sine theta. So always cos theta is the real part, right? I uh, sine theta becomes the imaginary part. So here the cos, the, cos two theta terms ha has a I. So we need to remove this i. So if you if we take this i as a common term to out, so this becomes a real number and cos theta comes first. And here, the minus sine 2 theta part has changed to plus i into sine 2 theta. So here they have done this thing. Here the i squared, I am writing this i squared as i into i, i into i equal minus one. So I am dividing one i to the other side. So that is equal to minus one over i. So here there are there is no i, right? They have taken one i out. So we need to divide by i. So that becomes minus one over i. So we know minus one over i is equal to plus i. So they have directly substituted that one here. Similar thing has happened in the other side also, right? They have taken minus i out. This time they have taken minus i as out and this cos theta becomes plus. So here we have to divide by minus one over i. So that is again minus one over i is equal to 
plus i that becomes i sin theta plus c now it's a straightforward thing here e to the power i 2 theta because there is 2 theta and here it's e to the power i theta so e to the again this is r square to e to the e to the power i 2 theta right uh, so this 2 power 2 can be taken as a common thing that is we can write it as r times e to the power i theta to the whole thing square this can be written as this format so this is r into e to the power i theta is given as z so that is that becomes z squared minus z plus c right this is the thing right so the additional thing you have to keep in mind here is uh, just keep in mind the relationship between hyperbolic cos hyperbolic sine and this e to the power i theta or i x just keep this one this is in your textbooks just uh, go through it i can't remember the exact values uh, because sometimes you need to involve this hyperbolic cos and hyperbolic sine uh, into this converting matter sometimes these are this would be necessary just go through the assignments i remember there are questions in the assignments and uh, there is a theory if i am right you can find this in 1a mathematics 3531 block 2 you can find the formula so just search in internet you can get the, right uh, any doubts here So there seems nothing. So I'll move on to the next one. Right. So the next choice of mine was to do the third question. Right. So the advantage in handling the third question is so if you move to the question paper, right, in most of the years, nearly in all years, they will provide the equations necessary. Right. Here. If you see this page, you will get every equation which you need to handle this equation, right? Even the ANOVA table with the equation, they are provided the ANOVA table, right? So handling the third question uh, is an easy part. It's an easy question. We, you can do it in uh, maybe 10 minutes. It's an easy part. We will see that, one, right? So the first question, uh, the first part is to identify the independent and dependent variable. So sometimes the students get can, uh, confused in the terms dependent and independent, right? So what is independent? Dependent means you are depending on something else. So that is why, usually the why term. Independent means something like as we don't listen to anything we move as we want. So the parameter, the variable which behaves as its own wish. Right? Independent. Independent. Right? Right? So I'll just say it in Tamil also. So, Sar Mari, Sara Mari. Sara Mari, Adi Tan, Inacha Madri, Tanaku Venundra Madri, Marradi, Sara Mari. Sar Mari, Adi, and the Sara Mari, Marrat Keta Madri, Ever effect on Mari to Andara Randa. So that is dependent. So that is simple as that, right? So here, they, they have given us some data, right? And uh, the study was conducted to identify the updating of ozone levels in California South Coast Air Basin for the years 1981 to 1991. It believes that the number of days that the ozone 
the levels exceeded 0.2 ppm depends on the seasonal meteorological index and right when you are reading this you have to keep in mind that they they are mentioning that it depends on so depends on see see seasonal uh, meteorological index so that means seasonal meteorological index that is the independent variable so they have already mentioned that it depends on so we there is nothing to think about that right so the number of days will be the y variable simple as that right so the second part is construct a scatter plot for this data and identify the relationship type right so we ju we just need to uh, take a graph sheet and mark down the point in a graph sheet it's be easier to mark in a graph sheet right so just draw a scatter plot right so how to say with, whether it is a positive relationship or a negative relationship right when the index increases that is when the x variable increases if the y variable the number of days also increase then it is a positive index if it is in the other way around when one thing increases and if the other thing decreases then it is negative index negative relationship that's all if one increases other increases positive if one increases and other decreases it's negative right so we can't say how much positive it is and how much negative it is if for that we need to find the correlation constant the r squared value right right they are asking right confirm the relationship type by coloration coefficient value so they are asking the coloration coefficient value that is r right so if we move to the question paper right in the question paper if we again if we move to that equation page right so they have given the coloration coefficient value and they have just simply given the equation so the only thing we have to do is to substitute in this and solve this so before substituting you have to see what are the terms so there is xi there is x bar there is yi there is y bar and xi minus x bar squared and there are some sigma things right so here it's up to you your convenience either you can find out these terms in the table in a table xi minus x bar you just need to uh, construct another column for yi minus y bar you need to construct another column for xi minus x bar whole thing squared another column for yi minus y bar whole thing squared another column just you need to add four more columns sometimes uh, another one you might need for xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar you just need four five columns after finding these columns right here you might get a confusion what is x bar and y bar x bar and y bar are simply the averages right if you go for the table right if you go for the table here right so you have the x values so you have the x values which are the index and you have the y values you just need to find the average add up everything and divide by the number of times so you'll get the x bar and you will get the y bar after that you just need to find the terms xi minus x bar a uh, one column for this one then yi minus y bar another column for this one then multiply these two and write down another column so sigma means you have to finally find the sum of that column and similarly xi minus x bar whole thing squared another column for that and yi minus y bar for another column for that and just simply add up those two and substitute everything in this uh, equation and just find the coloration value some students think that this is a uh, lots of work to do in half an hour but actually it's not if you do this question two or three times you you will take either 10 or 15 minutes to complete this one it's not a difficult task so always try to uh, if possible try to do this one right uh, so there's a question what is xi and yi so 
So the xi and yi are, so if you go to the table, right? So here, if you see this term, there, there is a sigma mark, which is i goes from one to ten, to n. So one to 10 means the number of terms. So i represents the number of term. So if i equal one, it's first term. i equal two, second term. i equal three, third term. We know x means the independent variable, the variable which varies randomly. So which one varies randomly here? We know that is the index. So x1, what is x1? The first one, this is the x1, right? So here this is x1, this is y1. So here you have to, so this is your i. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So you have to randomly number this one. Then this becomes x2. This is y2. This one is x3, then y3 x4, y4. Similarly, there are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 days. So there are term, 11 terms. So that is xi and yi. So after finding x bar, you know how to find x bar, just add up all these and divide by 11. So what is y bar? Add up all these, divide by 11. Right? So x bar, you know x bar and y bar. Just subtract. There are some subtracting work, some addition. So just use the calculator properly and finish it off, right? So after finding the positive coloration value, right? You can see they have, we have obtained a coloration value nearly equal to 0.8. So our assumption was correct, which is 0.8. So which is positive relationship. So if the coloration value is in negative, so then it's a negative one. If it is in positive value, it's a positive one, right? Right, uh, the next part, D part. So what is the D part question? A D part question is uh, write the best fit line for the given data. So they are asking the best fit line. So if you if you go to the equation page again, you go to the equation page again. So I think you might see. So this is the equation for the best fit line. So the equation for the best fit line is, also this one, this is the equation. Right. So here we need to find beta naught and we need to find beta one. Right. So without finding beta one, we can't find beta naught because the equation for beta naught is dependent on beta one. Right. So before finding beta um, beta naught, we need to find beta one. So they have given the equation for beta one also. So everything is given to you. So here you need to add up all the y terms. In this part, you need to add up all the y terms. Here, you need to add up all the x terms, divide it by number of terms, n. Here, you need to multiply both x and y terms and add up everything. Here, the squared of x terms. Here, also the squared of x terms. And divide it by number of terms. Right. Just uh, here, you they have given the equation and asking you to substitute it and solve it. That's all. So if you know beta one, then you know beta one, you know X bar, you have already found for the previous part, you know Y bar, you already found it for the previous part. If you substitute it, you, we can find beta naught. If you know beta naught and beta one, we can substitute and find the best fit equation. So that is in the Y equal MX plus C format, right? A very simple thing they are they have done some substituting and solving work we don't we don't need to know anything our calculator will do the work for us right you have to we have to just give the correct inputs so this is the equation for the best fit line right so this this line would be something like this in our graph if we go to our scatter plot right so this is our scatter plot in our scatter plot right we will get a line we will get a line something like this a straight line right bear with me 
consider take just straight line don't think this is going through origin eh? this is not 0 comma 0 don't think this is going through 0 comma 0 we don't need know what is the scale definitely it won't go through 0 comma 0 because it is in the format of y equal mx plus c so this would be a coloration line right so the, what is the next question i predict the number of days if the meteorological index is 16.8 so they have said that meteorological index that is our x variable is 16.8 they are asking us to find the number of days that is our y variable so if x is 16.8 they are asking us to find a y so that is a grade it's a grade 9 10 work they are asking us to they are giving us the x value and asking us to find the y value it's so simple right that's all right uh, any doubts uh, before i go into the anova table part hello ah uh, solunga na hello function il adichi and answer ne ready apply pannalama takeout el adichi oh na apply pannalam apdi and value ne ready vara vara paath eludalam oh 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 okay. you can use the calculator function okay you can just type a function and uh do it also right so the next anova table so anova table is very simple so i'll just uh, show the table and uh, do that one right in anova table right right here Hello. so start uh ima best fitted line equation ki thiyena ne oh बीटा नो Uh, beta naught is a constant right we have to find uh, beta naught by some manner right we need some method to find that one yes. so to find beta naught they are using the average values x bar and y bar all right right okay okay right so using x bar the average values they are finding the constant and applying that constant to any x and y values right right got it Okay. Okay. Right. So next we'll uh, move on to the ANOVA table. ANOVA table is very much straightforward, very easy. Right. So start from degree of freedom. Right. So I hope everyone could see the screen. Uh, so here the degree of freedom is nine. So simple subtraction. So ten minus one nine. Right. That's all. Here they are asking the total. in the sum of squares they are asking the total so you know just you need to add these two values so if you add these two values and you can find this part right so what is the mean square so this is remaining so to find the mean square divide 8000 uh, sorry 2831 uh, 13.7 by 9 so if you divide by 9 you can find this one so that's all right even these equations are given to us in the equation page if you go to the equation page these are given yeah the the entire anova table is given here and they have given the equations it's very much simple to fill the anova table right so if we move here again to test uh, the significance of the regression model at 5 percentage level of significance using uh, the about table so they are asking us to check the significance right so for this part we need to uh, do a small checking thing right so that is uh, we need to find the fl right so f value is written in this format so f 1 comma 9 right 1 comma 9 this 1 and 9 are the 
degree of freedom for the regression and the residual. So this is the regression part, regression, and this nine comes from the residual part, right? So then we have to move to the table, right, of 5% significance level. There are many tables for 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%. So we need to go to the 5% table and find out the F value for this 1, 9, right? Uh, that value is, we'll just move on to a table, if table. Right, uh, this is probability table. We'll move on to an F table. This is P table. Yeah. What's the F for? Right here, this is the F table. They have given F table, 5% significance level. So the you have to find um, one here, one comma nine, isn't it? This is one comma nine. Right, right. So here we have to, the first degree of freedom is one. The second degree of freedom is nine. So this is the first direction. This is the second direction. So it gives us 5.1174. This is the value, right? Just keep this value in my uh, mind. I'll write out here. It's so five point. One one seven four, right? We move to here. Right. So the calculated value from the ANOVA table, they have calculated the F value as uh, fifteen point eight eight eight. So this is the value they have calculated. From the chart, we know the value is 5.12, right? So there are two hypotheses. There are these two hypotheses, things. To be frank, right? I, I don't have a very much clear idea about this hypothesis thing. So this is a still, even I also don't have a very much big idea but i can give you a trick to uh, just find out the answer right so there are these two values which is 15 and which is 5 right just keep those values in mind right 15 and 5 uh, we know the general pattern of the f graph right so the general pattern of the f graph is in the f table right and so this is the general pattern right we have to just keep this in mind, right? So the value which we got from the chart, so that is 5.12, that is marked here. And obviously the 15.881, right? This 15.881 is larger than this five. So it lies in this right-hand portion, right? So at that time, right? We reject the hypothesis, right? At that time, the H naught hypothesis. So, what is what is the H naught hypothesis? Right? That is beta one is equal to zero, right? This hypothesis is rejected. Right? Just keep that in mind, and you can answer this question, right? If the calculated value is less than five then this hypothesis is accepted. This beta one equals zero is accepted. And if uh, this is larger, if the calculated value is larger than the value from the data, from the graph, then it is rejected. So I just keep that in mind and I used to uh, write the answer, right? So to be frank, I don't have a very much clear idea on the statistical part, right? Uh, if you have any doubts, please ask. Uh, so there is a question. Uh, where do you get one comma nine? 
right? So if you go to the ANOVA table, right, in the ANOVA table, give me a minute to just a minute. Right, then in from the ANOVA table, right? Here we know from the degrees of freedom, uh, one is which is this is 10, and the residual regression degree of freedom is one. So 10 minus one, the residual degree of freedom is nine, right? Uh, they are asking what is the value of uh, n in the ANOVA table. The value of uh, n in the ANOVA table is uh, 12. So for the total, you need to add another two, right? Uh, how do we calculate F0 in the ANOVA table, right? To calculate F0 from the ANOVA table, so you have the mean squares, right? So one mean square is 4,967.2. The other mean square value you can calculate. Right? So how do you calculate the other one? I already said the uh, idea. So you have to divide 4,813.7 by nine, and you have to find this value. After finding both the mean squares, you have to just divide the residual mean square, that is 4,967.2 by the other one, by the second one. So then you will get the F0 value, the 15.881, okay? So always the regression degree of freedom is one. This one is n, n minus one, uh, if right, n minus two, sorry, n minus two. This one is n minus one. So the total n value is 11, sorry. So 11, 11 minus one and 11 minus nine. So there, there is a small uh, issue uh, in this statistical part uh, while we are calculating some averages, sometimes we divide by n, sometimes we divide by by n minus one. So I don't have a clear idea in this, this statistics part, right? Uh, the reason which I uh, I choose this question is you can easily obtain marks in this one. So th the thing is, we are not going to do statistics in our career. That's why I didn't uh, bother about this. So my suggestion to choose this one is because you can easily obtain the marks within a few minutes. Uh, that is the reason I wanted you all to choose this question. Right? Any other question? Hello. Uh, yes. Hello. Uh, and the n value on the solar is one the table uh, table la and the number of rows it is one of the other row that is the other mentioned one uh, yes total number of data ah in in this total ah, number of data okay 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 It will not give F0, no. Uh, what do you mean uh, it will not give F0? Um, Four thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven point two. Seven point two should be divided by three hundred and twelve point six. Yeah, it it gives F not value. You just uh, do a, uh, do it in the calculator. It uh, it gives the value. So H0 and H1 are just two hypotheses, right? So H0 means hypothesis zero, H0 is, H1 is hypothesis one. 
So in one hypothesis, they are considering beta one as zero. In another hypothesis, they are considering beta one is not equal to zero. So hypothesis means they are just assuming a theory, right? Assuming some kind of theory and they are going to check whether that theory is correct or not. So that is the concept behind a hypothesis, right? So from their values, right? They have found that F is nearly 15.8. From the standard chart, we have okay, found one is five. The F value is five. So obviously 50 is less than, uh, greater than five. So we are considering as a 5% significant level. So the error which we can allow is 5%. So 15 is way past that 5%, it is it lies uh, way past that value. So they are rejecting one of that hypothesis, right? So the still, I don't know why they are rejecting H0 instead of H1. So I don't have a clear idea in that one. So for that purpose only, I, I asked you all to just keep it in the mind in a pattern and do that one, right? Uh, how to use uh, calculator for this? So how do I answer that question? What do you mean by how to use calculator for this? Uh, if you want, you can unmute and uh, speak. that uh, how to get the f calculated value so if to find the f calculated value you have to divide the mean squares values both the mean square values if you divide the mean square values so one mean square value is 4600 and sorry 4967.2 so you have to find out the other mean square value to find out that other mean square value you need to divide it by nine. That means 2,813.7, 2,813.7 should be divided by nine. So it gives 312.6. So you have to divide 4,967.2 by this 312.6. So it will give 15.888. So to use this, uh, there is a cal, there is a button in your calculators in FX 991 ES model. Uh, there is a button calc, which is uh, right bottom the shift button, right? You can use this one. Just refer YouTube. There are videos. Uh, if I could, I'll uh, share a video in my page. I'll later leave a link to my page. Uh, and so you can uh, just follow that method and you can find uh, these statistics values easily. So you need to just need to enter the X values. So once you enter the X values easily, it will give the X minus uh, X I minus X values or Y I minus Y bar or Y I minus Y bar squared. Everything we can find out easily. Uh, I'll try to up, um, upload a video. Uh, I mean, upload a menu means I, I'll try to share a link to my page. Okay. So I'll move to the next one, right? Uh, question number four. So in my, when I did the paper, I, I didn't do this one, right? So I left this, right? Uh, because one reason is it is statistics, right? So I left this part and I uh, took another easy one. So most of you would be familiar with uh, numerical methods, right? So the next choice of mine was to do the numerical method. one. so I, I didn't do this one, this testing T test and those uh, questions. So I went to 
the numerical method one the euler method the taylor series and the rk method right these are bit easy things to handle right uh so it's uh, is it okay if i continue or it's nearly 2 hours shall i continue or not right uh, some of them are asking to continue right so i'll go on to fifth question so uh, i am omitting some questions because i know most of the students were eligible last year or some years before that or last year before that year and um, uh they couldn't get through right uh, so i i have uh, some experience talking to some of my friends and the issue was in choosing questions right they have chosen the difficult one and spent most of time in that and the entire paper is gone so that's why i am omitting some things and i want you all to select the easier ones right so some uh, some would have uh, did this paper last year some would have attempted this one and they might realize what was the mistake which they did last year and it would be helpful for them to rectify that so that's why i'm omitting right so in question 5 right question 5 uh, they are asking to find uh, uh, using euler method they want us to find point 1 and point 2 y.1 and y.2 considering the step size as 0.1 with an initial condition as y0 equal 1 so in actually in the paper the initial condition as is given as uh, y0 equal 1 uh, right in our question paper so this is given as y0 equal 1 so let's check in the other uh, pdf also yeah in the pdf also it is in the same right but in the scheme they have corrected it right so that that is not a big issue right uh, y0 is given as 0 in the scheme right in the euler equation right we know that y1 is equal to y not that is not y1 y n plus 1 is equal to y n plus h times f of xn minus y right this is the uh, euler equation right so here they have given the function so the f means your dy by dx your first derivative so if you substitute that one here so yn plus 1 is equal to yn plus h times so your derivative is 1 minus y so here y in terms of y we need to write as yn right so when starting we need to substitute zero for n so when n equal 0 we get y1 equal to y0 h is our stepping size right right h is our stepping size we are stepping by point 1 so that is point 1 so f of x not comma y not they have simply substituted 0 for uh, n so they have changed the condition right that's why the y not is 0 plus 0.1 into 1 minus 0 so this 1 minus y not value is 0 after solving so we are getting 0.1 right so in the next stepping right so again when you are doing the next step so here n equal 1 so after substituting in y equal n plus 1 that euler's equation we get y2 equal y1 plus 0.1 into f of x1 comma y1 
So here for y1, you have found y1 as 0.1. That is your calculation. So you have to substitute that one here, the stepping size 0.1 into one minus. Again, this is your calculated value 0.1. So the answer is 0.19, right? So these are the two values. Okay. So then they are asking us to find the actual value. So for the, to do the actual value part, this is simple integration thing. So variable separable method, they have taken the variable separately and they have uh, done the integrating part. This is the LN log integration that is equal to X plus C, right? So while doing LN integration, so when integration, uh, gives you an ln part that is a log part either add the constants as they have done here in the scheme they have add the constant with c or when you are adding the constant to the log side where log is involved add like this one that is log c log 1 minus y plus log c okay. always add the constant also in the log format so the solving would be a bit easier, right? So if C is a constant, log logarithm of that constant is also a constant, right? So this is a simple solving part. So they have changed the log into ind indices form and substituted their initial condition and they have found C as zero, right? After being C is equal to zero, we know the equation for Y. So when X is point 0.1, they have found the value and when x is equal to 0.2 they have find the other value so numerical methods are always some approximations that's why the actual value and the approximation value there's a small difference right so we can't find the accurate value from Euler method or taylor polynomial or rk method whatever it is we can't find the actual value we can just find the value which is close to the actual value right those are approximations Right, any issues in this Euler method one? Uh, seems like nothing. So the RK one, right? So the RK method also involves some kinds of equations. So you need to just remember those equations. So in our, this paper, this RK method question was uh, the same question from the assignment, if I am right, right? So we know Y dash and they have given Z dash, right? Using Y dash and Z dash, they ask us to calculate Y point one and Z point one using RK fourth order method. So RK four method, right? So RK4 method has four equations. They have given the equations also, right? So then much easier. So you may need to find the values and just substitute it, right? Uh, should I explain this RK method also? Because some of them are replying that the time is uh, um, way past. The RK method is very much uh, simple, right? So we know the equation for K1, K2, K3, and K4. All four equations are given for us, right? Right? So the stepping size is 0.1, obviously. They are given Y0 and they are asking us to find Y1, Y.1. So the stepping size H is 0.1 and the initial values are given for us as Y0 equal to zero, sorry, Y0 equal to two and Z0 is equal to one. So those are the initial conditions, right? So similarly, we need to fire, substitute uh, N equal zero first right we need to substitute n equal zero right after substituting n equal zero and the function is we know the function that is x plus z 
so they have substituted this that one and they have just simply substituted in here so that is the k1 value is 0.1 so here this is a simple substitution thing right the k2 involves this k1 right when we are finding k2 we need to know the value of k1 right so the function here is n plus sorry x plus half of h and z plus half of this k1 value right so here you need to be careful right the to add with k sorry here we need to add zn with zn we have to add the respective value of z right so this k1 is y's value this is for y right so we need to find the k1 value for z first right so how to find the value for that one so again we need to find the k1 using the other equation which is z dash equal to x minus y squared using this equation we need to find the respective k1 for this z and substitute that one here that's why in the scheme that is mentioned as l1 right so when you are finding k3 you need to add the respective k2 value which comes from this equation adala kenekta adala ikkenage k1 k2 add karanna hari okay similarly then the k3 value so we need to do this one parallelly first we need to find the k1 for y and k1 for z then k2 for y then k2 for z right we need to do this in both side parallelly and go to the final answer any questions anything any questions so in my choice i have another two more questions to discuss the question number 7 and question number 9 so the question number 7 is with kirchhoff's law it's a very easy physics part and the question number 9 is with uh, quadratic equation and matrices which one should i do or shall we have another session tomorrow or shall we continue because some of them are regretting the time period reply in the chat please Okay, some of them are asking me to continue, and some of them are asking to continue on tomorrow. So what should I do? Only few are replying. after dinner <laughs> so you can eat while you are looking at this there's no issue <laughs> uh, 
okay we'll continue most of them want me to continue so in the rk method uh, you have to solve that parallelly right so be careful while solving parallelly there might some issues might rise right uh, but uh, i don't think uh, they keep uh, they will make it much difficult than this one uh, than this question uh, in in the coming paper right so uh, refer rk2 method also right so question number 7 so i again i skipped question number 6 right if you in question number 6 just uh, uh, i'll just give an uh, idea in question number 6 right in case when you are doing the paper right uh, uh, if you are doing the paper and if you have some issues with your choice you can obviously do the theory part right uh, the in in this particular paper you can obviously do the a part and b part right so when you when it comes to this heat equation or the wave equation we can actually do this one but it's bit time consuming you will you need to spend uh, some amount of time right so after proving this theory so proving the theory is easier you we need to fill this table right sometimes this table might get clumsier and we we need to spend much more time right so if you have time it's not an issue right it's a straight forward question but uh, i don't uh, support in uh, doing this one right so if you if you have no any other options just do the three theory part even if you do the theory part you get 50% of the entire marks so out of around 18 marks you will get nine marks right uh, so always be prepared with the theory right i am not much uh, sure about uh, asking you all to do the second part because sometimes it might get uh, much more difficult than this one right so someone has asked how to find l1 right to find l1 uh, you need to do the rk operation for the other thing right there are two equations right in the two equation one is uh, this x plus z the other one is um, x x minus y square so while you are doing x plus z to find the respective k1 value for z you need to solve this one the other one that is the x minus y square while solving that one you will need the respective value uh, respective k1 k2 value for y so both these equations are interconnected right so one variable is from one equation the other variable is from the other equation so you will get a simultaneous equation right you need to solve that one right even you won't get a simultaneous equation right yeah you won't get a simultaneous equation you get directly you will get the l1 value right so i'll explain this in this manner right uh, give me a minute right let's assume k values for this one and let's assume l values for this one so here it is l here it is k right so you can directly find k1 and you can directly find l1 not an issue right k1 and l1 it's not an issue right when you need when you are going to find k2 from this one when you are going to find k2 for for this one you need to add that respective k2 uh, k1 value for z so the z the equation for z is here right so usually we will be adding half of k1 so k1 is obtained for y so you can add a value of y to z right you we need to add the value of z for z so z comes from the other equation right z comes from this one so here you will you would have already found l l1 you know l1 you need to take half of l1 and add to here add to this part this dy by dx part so using that you can find k2 
similarly from this one you would have found k1 this k1 comes to here this l1 goes to here this l1 goes to here right again k2 will be coming here l2 will be going here k3 here and k4 goes to here usually we will find k1 and substitute to the same equation here we are finding k1 and substituting to other one and from the other one we are substituting to the previous one rotation like, like in rotation from one to another and they are to here like exchange offer right so that is the thing involved here so this question 7 so i'll move to the question 7 right uh, so here so every here we have this square right uh, it's a very simple one right they have given the equations they have given the curves of slope and they have given the values uh, here consider the rlc circuit inductance they have given the inductance they have given the resistance they have given the capacitance the voltage is given to us and consider the initial current and charge as zero ah this is a vital part consider the initial current and charges so when time equal zero i is zero that is the current is zero and charge q is also zero so find the charge and current at time t of the rlc circuit so simply you need to substitute vl vr vc into this vl plus vr plus vc equal e to et right all these thing needed to be substituted there right so i'll move on to this scheme right here they have just substituted if you see this one they have substituted here after substituting they have substituted the l value uh, uh before substituting the l value uh, you need to remember this is a physics law right that is the current is dq by dt that is rate of change of charge is the current flow right that is uh, from physics right you just need to remember this one so instead of di by dt so we know i is equal to dq by dt so we need to differentiate this one more time with respect to time so the second derivative of charge by the time right plus r into dq by dt so i we know i is dq by dt so they have substituted that one plus q by c so i into dt here i into dt right if you cross multiply these two here if you cross multiply these two i into dt is equal to dq right if you integrate both the side so we will get what is integration of dq that is q right that is the thing they have substituted right so 1 over c is in the front that is a constant that c is divided here equal 100 sin uh, 1500 t right and they have substituted the values so remember to convert to standard values if it is in milli you have to uh, include 10 to the power minus 6 and if it is in micro you have to uh, include 10 to the power minus 6 and those things after cal calculating uh, and dividing by 15 to 10 to the power minus 3 we have a second order differential equation right so if we have a second order differential equation we need to find the auxiliary equation this is level 3 max right so this is the auxiliary equation just substitute mor for first derivative so if first derivative is r the second derivative is r squared right so if if we know the auxiliary equation this is o level mathematics we need we can find what is the value of r right you can use calculator to find this one so this is the r values so after finding the r values we can substitute uh, this in the general format for the uh, differential equation right those are in level 3 mathematics right so here we know the complementary equation right so this is a complementary equation qc 
right? We need to write that team. The exponential format. So A and B. So this A and B are constants which we need to find, right? For that only, they were they gave us that at time at initial condition that is at time equal zero, Q equal zero, and I equal zero. These were given to find this A and B, right? So this uh, this is not enough. This is a complementary equation, right? We need to find the particular solution also. Right. Uh, to find the particular solution, how to do that? One? Finding particular solution. Right. Here, in finding particular solution, they have taken um, the general format. Right. If you see the, if you see here, our E is right. This portion. Right. This portion involves sine of thousand five hundred t. Right. So the so the general format for this is cos thousand five hundred t plus sine thousand five hundred t. We don't know what are the constant be before cos and sine. So we take it as c one and c two. Right. That is the thing which which they have uh, done here. Right. They have taken the constant as c one. And C two, and this is the general uh, format for that. Right after taking the general format, they have differentiated this once, and again once because our equation involves both first derivative and second derivative. After finding the first derivative and the second derivative, they have substituted this in the main equation. Right. So this is that one. Right. After substituting and equating the coefficients, so we can equate the coefficients. After equating the coefficients, they have found what is c one and c two. Right. So these are the solving parts. Right. So I am not explaining how to solve this one. Right. So these are the c one and c two things. So after substituting C one and C two, we can find the particular solution here, right? From this one, from Q P T. So this is our particular solution, right? We know particular solution Q P T, and we know the complementary solution. So if we add both those two, we can find the final solution for charge at any time, right? So we know uh, the initial condition at time equals zero, charge is zero. After substituting that, we can find the relationship for A and B. If you differentiate this equation, we can find out the time uh, current that is dQ by dt. And at that time also, at zero time, if there is no any charge, there can't be any current flow. So Again, we can apply the boundary condition and find another relationship for A and B. And from those two equations, simultaneous equation, we can solve and find A and B. So now we know this entire equation for the charge. If we differentiate this one once with respect to time, we can find the equation for current. So you'll be needing around half an hour to complete this one. Right. This is actually a level three differential equations question. So you need to know what is the what is complementary equation. You need to know what is particular what are the particular solutions. Sometimes you might need d operators. If you remember d operators, it is much more easier to do the solving, right? Uh, other than uh, using particular solution, sometimes it is easier to do with uh, D operators. So if you have time, uh, just go through D operators also. Yeah, I, I think uh, using D operators would be much more easier. Right? Just there is three. There are there are three rules for uh, for D operators. Just go through that one, and you can find. Right. So the next part is that is the easy part indicate steady state solution of charge they are asking to find the steady state steady state is when the time is infinite 
when the time goes infinitely by large amount what is the current flow and the uh, they asking only the charge so in the equation of charge in this one in this equation of charge right we just only need to substitute infinite for the place of time right so these two becomes zero these terms becomes zero so don't go and substitute uh, infinite here uh, for cosine sine so you don't know the value of uh, cosine cos infinity and sine infinity we, you can't say a value for cos infinity and sine infinity because it goes and goes on goes on goes on goes on and goes on we can't find say an exact value so we keep that in terms of t itself because sine and cos are they are periodic functions they uh, they change from minus 1 to plus 1 you can't pinpoint a value right so these two definitely become zero that you know e to the power minus infinity is this is exactly zero know that one so you can omit these two and the steady state charge is the balance, balance value you can find the steady state current also the stay in steady state current this one this is entirely zero the remaining is your steady state current so either you can find the steady state charge and both steady state current also so i didn't explain the solving because the solving is from level 3 right uh, any issues here anything right uh, then i'll move to question 9 okay so how many of you all are planning to do six questions just uh, i'll give one minute just uh, reply it in chat because the, we need to do six questions right in this paper yeah six question out of nine so how many of all uh, of you all are planning to do six questions yes i got one reply I know most of you all are not planning to do six questions. I know that one, right? Uh, but always be prepared for six in case uh, if one is difficult, uh, try to do that uh, heat question, that heat to Laplace or wave equation one, you can prove the theory. So at least you can score 50% of the marks, right? So this last one, right? There is a format to write uh, these constants, right? When you are changing. So if you when you are writing in matrix format, this is for the x squared, x1 squared. This one is for x2 squared, and this is for x3 squared, right? The other things are for so this one is for x1 x2 so the first this is for the first row second column so for x1 x2 right this is first row third column this one first row third column right so x1 x3 so when you are writing the constants for x1 x2 x1 x3 or x2 x3 whatever it is you need to just uh, divide the cohesion by two. So here we have minus two because these are at two places. So this one is x2, x1. 
right second row first column x2 x1 so one is one portion for here and another portion is for here because this is a symmetric matrix right so that is the way of changing that one it's a simple part in part to change right just substituting so after substituting they are asking us to find the eigen vectors right eigen values to find the eigen values just we need to subtract lambda times i a unit vector so you need to multiply a unit vector so what is a unit vector i i know so uh, most of you all know what is unit matrix right so that is 1 1 1 so here 0 here also 0 here also 0 0 0 and 0 right you need to multiply by this one only so only the diagonal one change so that is given here and we need to equate this to zero right we have to equate this to zero so and this is zero right so we we can op we we need we have three solutions right one is lambda equal minus one and lambda equal two and lambda equal other one is also two so we have same answer twice right the same answer we get twice so when you subst substitute two for this matrix when you substitute two for this matrix we can find out two eigen vectors right from this one we can find out one eigen vector so we need to sub substitute uh, minus one in this matrix and we need to find the new matrix here right So what is the new matrix after substituting minus one? So when you when we substitute minus one, it becomes two two minus one minus one minus one two minus one minus one minus one and two, right? So I think you you all remember how to do row operations, right? Yeah, this becomes minus one, two and minus one. Here yeah, minus one minus one and two. So using row operations or column operations, whatever it is, you have to simplify this as much as possible and find two or three uh, equations, simultaneous equations, so that you can solve this easily. Right? You can't use calculator to solve this one. Nah? So this is, you can't use calculators. Right? You have to make this small as possible. Right? So how to do that one, right? So the equation here is a minus lambda i, a minus lambda i into x equals zero. This is the equation. So here this becomes x1, x2, x3 equals zero. So you need to perform row operation or column operation. You no need to worry about this one because this is entirely zero. We no need to uh, worry about this one also. Right, just we need to do the row and column operations here. So you can substitute, uh, um, uh, subtract uh, third column from first column. That is R1 minus R3. So when when it becomes R1 minus R3, the second term cancels out. That is minus one and minus one cancels out. Uh, the first term becomes three. Uh, second terms become zero, and the third term becomes minus three. So three, zero minus three so other other things remain as that and similarly from the second equation you can sub subtract third equation so r2 minus r3 when you subtract r2 minus r3 you will get zero three minus three so i'll keep the last one as same minus one minus one two right so here x1 x2 x3 from x1 from this first term first row and second row you can write 3x1 3x1 equal 3x3 so that is that means x1 equal x3 from second equation you can write 3x2 from the second row you can write 3x2 minus 3x3 equal 0 so that means x2 equal x3 so that implies x1 equal x2, that's equal x3. 
so x1 is equal to x2 x2 is equal to x3 so let's assume that is equal to k so you can write a matrix as k times 1 1 1 so this is the eigenvector 1 1 1 right so similarly when you are doing it for minus uh, 2 here we took we assumed as k right in this case you uh, there would be a situation where you have to take uh, two variables uh, like a b or m n like that from those two variables you can find these two eigenvectors right so that is the idea there right uh, what do you mean by can you explain uh, part b again part b means this first part is this one Response. Right? Ah, yes. Ah, he wanted that one. Right? To find the eigenvector, we have to just subtract a unit vector from the given uh, matrix, right? So the given matrix is A. Let's assume the given matrix as A, right? So you need to Mm, subtract lambda times i so i is the unit vector right so unit vector has only effect in the diagonal so other terms are zero these two are zero here it's zero here it's zero and these two are zero right so when you multiply this by lambda all these things changes by lambda right other things are zero so from a right from a so this is our a you know we know a from uh a, we need to subtract this matrix, right? If, you, if we subtract, this is the format. After subtracting, we need to take determinant. So from this determinant, you need to equate that determinant to zero. So you know how to take determinants, right? So it's an easy part, right? Take a determinant and equate it to zero. So even you can use calculator, you need, you no need to factor this one. You can use the calculator to solve this uh, uh, cube equation, cubic equation and uh, take the eigen uh, lambda values, eigenvalues. From the eigenvalues, we just spoke how to take the uh, eigenvectors, right? So after finding the eigenvectors, uh, they are asking us to find the orthogonal matrix P, right? So before starting the orthogonal matrix, we need to normalize these eigenvectors. So normalizing means just dividing by the modulus. So if we take this first one, this first one, right? So this is one, 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 right? So modulus means you have to just square these threes, three values, add those two, uh, three values, take a square root. So that is square root of three. Similarly, they have taken the others and they have find the normalized vectors, right? Uh, so using these three normalized uh, eigenvectors, right? All of a sudden, this has become root six. Uh, how is it that possible? I think there is some issue in this uh, Thing. All of a sudden, where did this root six come from, right? Uh, using these three, right, okay, these three normalized vectors, you can write the matrix P, right? So P, is, P would be one by root three, one by root three, one by root three in the first column, minus one over root two, one over root two, zero in the second column, and in the third column, minus one over root two, zero, and one over root two in the third column, right? After writing that one, Right. Uh, 
There is some issue here. Give me a minute. There's some issue in the scheme. I didn't see that one. second give me a second there's a projection part remaining right we need to project that one that is not given yet the scheme right give me a minute i have that projection if you have any issues please ask that one uh, unmute yourself and ask that one. Lambda two ko po to sahiye kila. Lambda two lambda equal two one two 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 varu kila. Oh, oh, oh. Eighteen vectors ko bande sir bande minus one one zero one two two. Matra the bande minus one zero one two mati po tra kila. Adi pudi. Minus one zero one two mati po dila. Andha kelvi senji to po kila. Um, ungal ko varra moon saman padgalim suru kela do orai netle. Pana ang mudal la bande x one saman x two saman x three into bande chida ne. Apa ada saman k ini itu tuan yang orang vektor kan do. Adat ter time la mande, ina saya ada insur, na abadi orang orang English letter order ni part elah de, rend elah tu dah yapu. Right? Aha. Anda rend, na katran, anda rend elah tu dah yapu, rupa P Q, ilah ilah M, abadi ni asyum panni, ilah ilah M common elah dikira pula orang vektor um, M ilah M common elah dikira pula inor vektor um kita cium. So this is also a similar question, right? Not the same question. Uh, it is a similar one, right? So here, when they are substituting a particular value for lambda, here, let's say they are, they are substituting zero for lambda and they are getting an equation like this one, right? So here, x plus y plus z is equal to zero, right? You can't solve this furthermore. So in our case, right, in our question, right? When we substitute uh, two for lambda, what will be the value? When we substitute two for lambda, what is our our matrix? Our matrix is minus one, minus one, minus one. Again, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Everything are minus one. So you can get only one equation that is minus x. One minus x two minus x three equals zero. This is the only equation we can obtain. Other than this, we can't take any other equations. So if you multiply this by minus, you will get x one plus x two plus x three equals zero. So I am assuming x one as p and x two as q, right? So what is x three? So x three is Minus p, minus q. So what is the solution for x one, x two, x three? X one, x two, x three. So this solution is. So here p, q, and minus p, minus q. So this is the solution. So I am going to break down this in this format, right? So that is equal to p, p times. One zero minus one plus q times zero one minus one. K 
can i write this like this can you all uh, did you all get this i have just separated these two taking only the p terms in the first one and taking only the q terms in the second one can you all understand this one so if you multiply this yes yeah the, uh, this is easy so from these the two eigen vectors are these two that is 1 0 minus 1 and 0 1 minus 1 these are the two eigen vectors okay so the next part is the tricky one here in selecting this question the next part is the tricky i'll just uh, move on to the another scheme and i'll uh, show that one right hello ah uh, solunga na okay ipa eigen value and alpha vector oda korainda value vera vera padichittu appadiye seyada and diagonal rendu kaatidanga adu maarichenda maaruma அப்படின்ட் <laughs> right uh, there is a small uh, solution part we need to do before uh, going to find before we we find the matrix p right so here we need to find three matri- uh, three uh, eigen vectors like vectors those are v1 v2 v3 right we know u1 u2 u3 right these are not the same values but the procedure is nearly same right uh so we know our u1 value we know our u1 u2 and u3 right so there's a projection part so finding v1 is easy so v1 is u1 by mod of u1 so 1 divided by square root of 3 right not 3 that is square root of 3 so v1 is 1 by root 3 comma 1 by root 3 comma 1 by root 3 so in p matrix p is v1 v2 v3 so we need to find this v2 and v3 to to find this v2 and v3 we have an equation right so this is the equation so we need to keep this in mind so projection of w1 into u2 right so here the projection of w1 into u2 is uh u2 times v1 into v1 u2 times v1 into v1 right so u2 minus projection of w1 into u2 is equal to u2 times v u2 into v1 into v1 there is a reason for that uh to write this in that manner so i don't want to explain that one because uh, the exam is too close so i don't want you all to get confused so that's why i'm not explaining that one right so what is u2 into v1 you know what is u2 right this is u2 so into v1 v1 is this one right so 1 over root 3 1 over root 3 and 1 over root 3 so simple dot product so 1 by 1, 1 in the first term into first term so minus 1 into 1 over root 3 that is minus 1 over root 3 1 into 1 over root 3 that is plus 1 over root 3 0 into 1 over root 3 is 0 and you have to add all these three so that is obviously 0 that is why here it's 0 into we no need to bother the, about this v1 because it is 0 so this term cancels out so we need we know what is u2 so we, if we know u2 sorry uh, u2 bar right that is u2 minus projection of u2 we know this term if you know this term you can find the modulus so the modulus is root 2 and if you divide it so we can find v2 so v2 is minus 1 over root 2 comma 1 over root 
and the final term is zero. Right. Similarly, we can find v3 also. Right. So v3, the equation is somewhat bit bigger. Right. This is the equation for v3. Right. Here. Yeah. So when you are writing for v3, please keep in mind there will be another projection term. So this is the projection term. When we wrote for u2, we had only one term like this. When we are writing for u3, there will be two terms like here. So there are two terms. So u3 into v1 and u3 into v2. u3 minus u3 into v1 into v1, u3 into v2 into v2. So you know how to solve this one. Right. After solving, you can find the projection vector. After finding the projection vector, you have to divide that by its modulus and you will get V3 also. So after finding V1, V2, V3, using these three, we can write the uh, matrix P. Right. That answer is given here. So without showing these calculations, Right, without showing these projection calculations, they have directly uh, obtained this. So these are those values. These are V1, V2, and V3. So combining this V1, V2, V3, they have written the matrix P. Right. So if you know matrix P, you can use your calculator and find P inverse. Simple as that, easy. If you know P inverse, if you know A, you know A, A is given, and we know P, so we can simply multiply that and we can find the matrix D. So very easy part here. Only the issue is you need to remember those projection work, right? So keep that in mind. So other things, the D to the DN, uh, using the above results, find dn and d inverse, where n is a positive integer. So we know d, right? We know what is d. So if you want to find d squared, we have to multiply d by twice. So that is this one. So when multiplying, the middle p and p, this p and p inverse becomes i. So a and A multiplies to A squared. So P inverse A squared into P. So to find D cube, we have to multiply D squared by D. So again, it this is a simple multiplication. Only thing P inverse into P is I and A into A becomes A squared and A squared into A becomes A cube, that thing. So when there is a cube, P inverse do not change P also do not change, A gets a cube. So if there is N for D, we will get an A N. That's all, right? To find D inverse, right? To find D inverse, uh, you can do this in uh, two ways, right? I have the, uh, N is a positive integer. So you can do that in the other way. If N, it, N is an integer, normal integer, Right, you can substitute minus one, one for that, but here they have mentioned specifically that n is a positive integer, uh, so that won't be an uh, option, right? So we have to do it in the traditional way, right? So we know d, right? So to uh, remove this p inverse in front of a, I'm multiplying by p in front of D. So similarly, in front of P inverse, we have to multiply by uh, P. So P and P inverse cancels out and we get A uh, PD is equal to A times P, right? To remove this uh, D, so we need to find D inverse, right? We need to find D inverse. To remove uh, this D from this side, I'm multiplying by D inverse. Right. So here, if you multiply by D inverse as here, they are multiplied by D inverse at, at the end. So we have to multiply by uh, D inverse at the end. 
right? So D and D inverse cancels out. That is P times A P into P inverse. To cancel uh, the A inverse, so to cancel this A, so both uh, at the both uh, side at the front, they have multiplied by A inverse. So when we are adding A inverse in the front, here also A inverse in the front, here at the front. So A inverse and A cancels out and P into D inverse remains. So only thing to remain, uh, we have to cancel is this P. So at the front, you have to multiply by P inverse. Here, so they have multiplied by P inverse. So P inverse, A inverse, P is equal to D inverse. So we know D inverse, simple as that, right? So the next part, uh, there's a question. Is there is an issue if we change U1 and U2, U3? No, you can change it, no, no problem, right? But be careful while solving, right? So here, uh, we need to find, uh, derive the quadratic equation in and where x and y are given. So they have given x and y, right? And they want us to substitute in that equation, that is Q, um, that is this equation, that is x transpose into A into x. So this is X transpose, we know this is A and this is X, right? You no need to multiply and all. Just you need to write this equation, right? You, we know how to write this equation. So this is the constant of X1 squared. This is the constant for X2 squared. This is the constant for X3 squared, right? So this is the constant for X1 and X2, but you have to multiply by this by two. So this is the constant for x1 and x3, and we need to multiply by multiply this by two. And this is the constant for x2 and x3. We need to multiply that one by two. That's all, simple. In the first part, they gave the equation and asked to write the matrix. In the last part, they are giving the matrix and asking us to write it in the equation format. In For y, instead of a, there is D, that's all. So in this D, so this is much more simpler. This is the equation for, sorry, uh, constant for Y1 squared, this is for Y2 squared, and this is for Y3 squared. Other things are zero, so nothing need to be considered. There's a minus missing here. They have forgotten to write the minus, right? Uh, show that P inverse is equal to PT. So you know P, you know PT. PT is the transport, change the rows and columns, that's all. Right, you know to find the P inverse, right? So P inverse, uh, you, either you can, use, you can use the calculator or else there's the standard procedure. Mm. The standard procedure is you need to find the adjoint matrix uh, and divide by the determinant, right? So, so what is the adjoint matrix? So that uh, the adjoint matrix thing is, uh, so that is given here directly, right? So you need no need to bother that uh, uh, much. So you can use the cal, right? You no need to show the uh, calculations here to find in the matrix, that is the A-level one. So they don't expect you to show the calculations. I'm, I'm 100% sure about that, right? So after showing that PT is equal to P inverse, uh, show that Q, uh, Q of X is equal to Q of Y, where Y equal PTX. So here we are, we, you can do this in two methods. They are, they are, they are given that uh, Q of X is equal to Q of Y. So they have given that Q of X is equal to Q of Y and show that Y equal uh, PTX, right? So this is Q of Y, right? So this is Q of Y. They have started from Q of Y, right? And they have substituted Y, uh, instead of Y, they have substituted PTX, right? 
that is trans transpose p into x. Here also they have substituted that. So the transpose t, right? The transpose of t, again they have ta taken transpose. So once they have taken transpose, again, if they take the transpose, we will again get the p, right? Rho to column, and again the column will change to rho. So again, we will get p, and here x to x to transpose, right? So p into d into pt, p into d into pt, right? p, d, pt. We know pt is p inverse. So they have substituted that. p, d, pt. This is A. You can find it from the previous solvings, right? So here we have done, right? Here from this one, you can just multiply and manipulate this. And if you take A to one side, you will get this one. You can do the do that one. I'm pretty much sure you can do that one. So P into D into PT will give directly you A. So this is simply QX. So that is a proof. Or else you can start from these two and equate these two and show that y equal pt times x, either way. You can uh, take the given data and show what they are asking, or you can take the, what, uh, the asking part, that is you can take y equal pt x as a data and show Q, qx equal qy, or you can take qx equal qy as a data and show the one also, either way around. Anything can be done, right? So that is the point where I would like to stop that one. These are my choice, which I did in the paper. Uh, even you can try the eighth question one, but eighth question that uh, kernel and range thing is a bit confusing. So uh, there's an issue in that one also, right? Uh, can you explain part A again? Uh, part A means uh, how to write the matrix. That one. You can ask the adults, I'll be here for a few minutes. Do you mean this one? Yeah. So you want, you want to know how to write this one, right? So this equation, right? So in the matrix format, the diagonal is for x1 squared, x2 squared, and x3 squared. That is for the diagonals. So diagonal will give one, one, and one. So this is x1 and x2. So x1 and x2, always remember the first row, right? The first row, second column. First row, second column, right? So that has minus two. So always when you are writing it in a particular location, divide that by two. The reason is the same term comes in another location that is here at this location, right? If you see that location, so this is the second row, first column, again, X2, X1. So again, at that point, so this is minus one. So one in this minus two, one minus one goes to one location and the other minus one goes to another location. That's why we equally divide that one. They always divide by minus two. So what is X2 and X3? X2 and X3 is the second row, third column. Second row, third column is this location. This one, here again, minus one. There is another location that is the third row, second column. So here minus one. And the last one again, minus one and minus one. Right? Any other doubts? So I, I'll be uh, leaving this uh, uh, recorded video in my channel, okay? You can uh, uh, go and uh, check out my channel and you can find out uh, some other recordings too and uh, uh, this one also, right? I'll uh, try to upload this one by tomorrow within two days.
or tomorrow and i'll uh, try to find a video for the calculator and uh, uh, i'll try to add that one also a link i'll try to leave a link in my page right in my fb page you can if you you can go to my channel and you can find out my fb page also uh, and there's another one of my friends channel right he had already done a video in that uh, uh, done a video regarding that uh, calculator uh, so you can find that uh, in his channel uh, if i am right the channel's name is uh, uh, suresh chanaka if i am right i'll try to leave a link for that one also in my page i had that uh, i can't remember that link uh, i'll be here for a few minutes uh, you can ask uh, the doubts on mute and you can ask Uh, the recorded video will be uploaded to my channel you can see there i left a link in the chat you can find the uh, link so this is my uh, this is my channel's link i'll i left it for everyone also wait give me a minute uh, uh, for five max uh, for five max uh, so i am also writing the final this time in five max so once i have prepared for the exam uh, i'll arrange one for five max also you can ask the doubts i'll be here uh my expectation is we spoke to the faculty uh, the department right we spoke to the department and at that time kumari madam our coordinator she said uh, only for this time uh, we will be getting the same uh, that means the same format paper right uh, that is um, this old type paper we will get this one uh, but uh, in the following yes they won't do this one right so the this last link which i have dropped here this is the channel of one of my friends channel he has a video for about calculators you can see that one and just uh, refer youtube uh, there are many videos about this calculation part and you can easily do that too uh mr lk ika i have a doubt in 2016 17 first part q uh, question part c uh, is it possible to take few minutes to explain that part if possible uh, let's see what is first what is the question yeah. 
anyone any other doubts so question c yes what is the doubt in that Mr. L.K., what is the doubt in that? Part two: How that I, how that T came in marking scheme. T in part two means in the part C, part two. Are they assuming a value? They are. They are assuming X as T. That's all. They are assuming x equal t, so y is equal to two minus t. Uh, so let's see the question. So f x is equal to x squared i plus y into. So, so what is the question? Give me a minute. I have to see the question also. This is 2013. Uh, this is the question, right? So this is x squared i plus y into j, right? And they are trying to find the equation of the straight line. That's all. So they are taking, assuming x, x as t. So the straight line is from 2 comma 0 to 0 comma 2. So if the straight line is from 2 comma 0 to 0 comma 2, what is the equation? So you can find out the equation, right? Simply. So for if, the, if you know the equation, if you take x, x, t, from that equation, you can write y. So that is the thing that is that has happened here. Yeah, uh, anyone else? So I will leave a link. Uh, I'll upload this uh, to the YouTube, my channel, uh, my channel. You can find it there. Uh, and you can find me in uh, Facebook also. So this is my page. Right, I'll leave a link to my page also. So anything else? So if there's nothing, I can uh, wind up.
seems like nothing. So prepare well and uh, get through the exams. Right? Uh, then we'll meet up in another session. So I'm winding up, okay? Mm-hmm.